Hi, how are you? I am Ran. Welcome to my channel and this is my daily vlog where I share recipes, diet tips, exercise advice, things that I have learned to help me lose weight and become a size healthier. I busy today. I obviously got my glasses. It's like seeing the world in HD. It's a crazy different. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't decided yet. I don't actually uh, require them to see, like to require them to drive or anything like that. I have a really good vision, but it does make things from a distance just a little bit crisper i guess i'm like on the borderline of needing glasses is what my eye doctor told me it's like is your option it's not required though <laughs> i'm like well if it helps eh, i'll try it so that's what i did today oh and i made my persimmon cookies i did use a sugar substitute and i found out that the sugar substitute is not as sweet as actual sugar the one I picked. So I'm th thinking, and then of course that was the first batch I made. You know, trial and error with this stuff. Uh, that's why I didn't want to <sighs> play with the flour this round because I'm already playing with the sugar. But they did turn out pretty good. I did add a more sugar in the second batch that I baked and uh, that was of course was even better. I am thinking of taking a different next time I make it I'm going to probably try a different brand of sugar sweetener because I wasn't too I wasn't overly impressed with the sweetener I got but you know it, it is trial and error. Everything reacts differently chemicals make different reactions and that's basically what baking is and otherwise they turned out pretty good i mean they tasted great my partner ate a bunch of them <laughs> uh i didn't i i ate a little bit because i can't eat a bunch of anything these days <laughs> but i did eat a little bit and they were delicious I love my persimmon cookies, but I am definitely going to probably not use that sugar anymore. I'm just going to keep trying different sugars until I find one that kind of works better when you bake, I guess. I don't know. I need something that's going to be really con beneficial when I do baking because Obviously, I want to make a lot of different things, and when holidays come around, I want to be able to make things that I can share with my family, and I can't do that. It, well, I could with very regular sugar, of course, naturally, but I kind of want to keep the momentum going. It's so easy to slip, especially during the holiday, and then when you make something, you tend to try to take small amounts and like um and taste it because it's normal right it's a normal thing to taste what you make so yeah i'm i don't know i don't know what to do there uh, i'll figure it out it's like a puzzle and i want to put it together and make it awesome i guess <laughs> but yeah definitely and um I found out I didn't have nutmeg either. Out of all the spices, I have tons of spices because I cook quite a bit. And I don't have nutmeg. Nutmeg to me seems like the, a basic spice that you should have. A little normal. People who bake a lot or cook a lot would tend to have in their kitchen. And I didn't. And I'm like, that is so bizarre. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I was thinking of pot stickers for dinner tonight, but I'm like, um, no, we're just gonna then for yourself tonight because I don't think I want to cook again. I'm gonna have a lot of dishes to clean up from baking earlier. Well, yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing: dishes, cleaning up the house, 
think so, you know, just it's part of self care because when you do your little goals, they help you feel better. And it's not just sitting down and doing nothing, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, self care. Tomorrow I will have a busy day too because I am going to be helping my partner's stepfather. He needs to borrow our check, and that's where I come in. I drive him. I play taxi cab. I don't care. I look at it as an opportunity to get out of the house and stretch my legs, honestly. Any excuse to do that is a good excuse, right? That's what I see. You never look at it as a bad thing. When you get to go out and you get to be out there in the world, they're all good things. Definitely good things. Um, and it's like good days and bad days, I suppose. But today's a good day because, you know, I did accomplish all my goals. I even got to make my cookies. <laughs> They're actually bars, I guess. They're not even cookies. But I keep calling them cookies because that's what I think of them as. I mean, when my grandma made them, they looked like cookies to me. So <laughs> I can hold them whatever I want. I get to make them. The cookies now. <laughs> Doesn't matter. But I am having fun experimenting with it and playing with new sugars. And um, the second batch did turn out better than the first, but I do want to kind of work on that. And of course, I do want to kind of put protein flour in it, so eventually start doing that as well. And she's her recipe is so strange it said salad oil i don't even know what that is i don't know so i used avocado oil so it has good oil it's probably fatty but it i look at it like it has the healthy fat and um the healthy fat will like i don't like one little bar is all you need for your, you don't have to have nuts that day and you don't have to worry about getting your nuts that day. It's just the ways to slip in like things and make your diet easier and not have to worry about it. And that's kind of what I like to do. Kind of my thing. Kind of my thing. <laughs> make my life easy. Please make my life easy. So yeah, I, I do like to do little things like that and just slip little things in and, um, we we do have like uh, lately i've been wanting oatmeal cookies but i'm not i don't even sure how i do that because no matter how you roll the dice you gotta have the oats in it and that's gonna be a lot of carbs so moderation i would think would be the only way i mean i can't cut down through the flour that's used and I can do sugar substitute and that would make it moderately healthier, but it's never going to be completely healthy. And that's the thing. And that's the thing that people need to understand when you do like change these recipes around like the dessert recipes or whatnot, they're never going to be completely healthy, no matter how you look at it. There's still going to be like a, a portion of a portion of like um like guilt. I I don't know. It's just a portion of richness to it, and um, that's where you put in moderation. You can take the edge off. And make it better that way. But, um, and of course, that is always ideal. Absolutely ideal. And um, that that is probably the best way to do it. And you're still reflecting in a very healthier light doing that. But you also have to understand, even doing that doesn't necessarily mean that these cookies are healthy for you. They're always going to have a portion of the cookie that's not going to be all that healthy because no matter what you put in it, what you substitute, you're still, at the end of the day, there's still going to be 
somewhat unhealthy for you. You can make them healthier, but they're never going to be completely healthy. And as long as you keep that mindset, and as long as you don't lie to yourself, because we do have a tendency to do that. It's like, oh, why I put sugar substitute? I mean, they're great. They're good for you. Mm. No, they're better, but it doesn't mean they're necessarily good for you. So it's just a lot of people tend to we do tend to tell ourselves things like, oh, it has to be good for you because there's no sugar in it, or it has to be good for you because there's no flour in it. That doesn't necessarily mean that's the case. Um, nutrition is a very important thing, and it's a very complex thing. And that's why I tend to keep a food diary, because I'll be honest with you. As smart as I like to think I am, I make mistakes. And... If I were to have to keep track of everything on my own, I wouldn't be able to do it. And that's why I always encourage people food diary, definitely. After a while though of vlogging, if you have like your normal eating habit of what you normally eat per day and et cetera, you get to be really good about judging where you're gonna be at as far as your calories are and stuff like that. And it does get easier. But at first, always start with that food diary. That is going to be the most basic, important thing. And another thing that somebody recommends is getting a full-size mirror, full-length mirror. I have yet to get one, obviously. Um, that's on my list. But a full-length mirror and look at yourself in the mirror every day. So as you size down, um, you start building up to start basically telling your subconscious this is me now i am not this morbidly obese person i'm not that i'm the way where i started i have gone down this is me this is where i am at today and um you just got to be able to get through to your subconscious level so you got to get out of the habit of thinking of the old you where when you bought your clothes or the way you looked like what you would think would look on you they don't look the same and it's me especially me especially because um it's like where i lost weight i've lost weight in like certain areas I've lost a lot of weight in some areas I haven't really lost much of anything and it's just so and my curves have gotten much much different now and it's different portions and and so I basically I don't look like I used to and um, my nose <laughs> it doesn't look like it used to because apparently um, when I was a lot larger um, my nose got stretched and now that my skin's starting to suck in my nose isn't stretched anymore and it has gotten narrower i guess i don't know oh, that's what i'm told and i never really thought about that so it's just like things will change and it is just kind of coming to terms and accepting that and that's part of the psychology that you kind of need to go with and in the mental health issues that you deal with it's a daily struggle um always tell yourself that you're beautiful in the mirror and mean it because you are it doesn't matter what the world thinks because it's it's not the world's responsibility to make you happy it's your responsibility to make you happy and I know that sounds kind of cold and jealous but it it is essentially true and there are people in this world that don't want you to be happy and you just don't listen to them because at the end of the day I think and I am an artist I do draw I paint I sculpt I bake um, I make jewelry I do all kinds of stuff at the end of the day i like to look at people i like to study their faces and their body types and because i think people are beautiful and i'm not saying like the the 
you know, magazine people. I'm saying normal, everyday people. Flaws and all are absolutely beautiful to me because it truly what makes you, sets you apart from everybody else. And no matter what, no matter what scars you may have inside and out, what things have to happen to your body, what traumas happen, how you were born, etc., you're still an amazing work of art. And no matter what, you are beautiful. So never once let anybody tell you different. Because I think true beauty is when you start to embrace your flaws and accept them. To me, that's beautiful because I don't find flaws. I see beauty. So with that in mind, remember to hydrate. Hydrate's very important. Sunny days, cloudy days, hydrate. And with hope, anything is possible. So never lose hope. And always remember, your flaws are beautiful. They are what make you you, and they are what make you unique. Till next time. Talk to you later. Bye.